Welcome, everyone, to My Gorgeous Son, the show where I, Broly Bush, help my gorgeous, tall son, Andy, uh, with his wife, while talking to various guests and experts and whatnot, with, as always, the help of our gorgeous producer, Stefan McLeod, and our doubly gorgeous intern, Everardo! Andy! Hi! Hi, Dad. How's it going? We skipped over the guest of honor here, as always. Yeah. Hard to call him a guest. Co-host, guest, beautiful subject of the affair, Andrew. Oh, yeah. That's me. That's me. Yeah. My lovely my lovely big boy. Thanks, Dad. Now, I'm going to say, I'm going to address the elephant in the room right off the bat. Mm-hmm. We've been offline for over two months here. Yes, that is true. It's been, we're a little rusty, I think. There's some rust. Yeah, I feel, I'm feeling the rust a bit. We lost our intern to England for yeah. a bit. We'll find out more about that in a sec. Mm-hmm. For anyone who doesn't know, is anyone who's touring, t- tuning in just now, Everardo's taking the uh, uh, podcasting program at Ryerson University, and uh, we scooped him up to be an intern on Toronto's premier podcast about a dad promoting his son. Yeah, I'm doing, uh, it's, it's kind of like a semester abroad. I mean, Ryerson isn't sure, isn't doesn't know about it, and uh, I'm not really taking classes here or anything. But completely unsanctioned and uneducational semester abroad, also known as being at a wedding. Uh, that's true. There, part of the uh, program there is a wedding the <laughs> involved. Program. The program is to be <laughs> yeah. at a wedding. Are you doing a speech? Uh, no speech. So, oh, but speaking I don't know why comes I was so naturally to you, Everardo. I can't believe you weren't asked. I can't believe you're not emceeing the entire affair. (laughs) Andy, so let's get back to the elephant to the room. It's been a couple months since we've been away. How's your summer? Oh, the summer's okay. It was all right. I was, I just, uh, I didn't, I didn't do a huge amount of, uh, of stuff. I spent, uh, spent a lot of time inside playing video games. Um, I, uh. Loves his video games. I'm a huge fan of the video games. a vid head. I'm a vid head. I've been, I've been working on a, a retro pie. Uh, retro is, pie. Yeah. What the hell does that mean? A retro pie is like a. It's a, it's essentially. Um. Uh. It's it's like a Kinda retro. Pie vi- you cool on the windowsill so uh, the re- neighborhood boys can come and get it. Follow their noses t- to the windowsill. Retro, like the fifties. Yeah. I you get go it. on. Yeah. Okay. Uh, it's a it's a system that you can like play a Nintendo, Super Nintendo, Genesis games on it and stuff like that. So I've been working on that. What do you mean working on that? Well, it's a it's a you buy you buy something called a um. Pie. A retro pie. Uh, wait, pie. no. No, raspberry pie. You buy something called a raspberry pie. Say pie one more time. Say pie one more time. Pulp Fiction. He doesn't say that. I swapped the word. Say what? Say pie one more time, <laughs> motherfucker. Say pie one more time. I bet there's a legion of math nerds that would love that. We're talking about pie. He's just freaking out. He's just like, Say point. pie one more time. Say pie to another digit. Three point one four one five nine two six five. Holy shit! We got a nerd in the house. <laughs> Sound the alarm. Clear out the building. That's a full scale red five alarm nerd alert. What? You don't know pi to that? I know three point one four, and then five, the next nine, digit two, six, is five. an emoji of a middle finger. <laughs> Anyone who's going to three digits of pi can suck my dick. I'm I am terrible at math, but I was bored, so I just memorized it on the calculator. I was That's all I did. Sure. Yeah. I memorized one thing on the calculator and one thing only, baby. Boobless, spelled upside down. I'm talking eights. I'm talking fives. Yeah. There's a one in there. There's a three. There's a couple zeros. Was there, no, that was not a one. It was a seven, wasn't it? Seven. Seven. Boobless. Because if it was the I, it would be boobies. Oh, boobies. Wouldn't it? That was a missed opportunity by me. Boobies was right there yeah. waiting for me. And I was so consumed by boob. You know, kids these days don't even understand because i don't even know if they're using calculators anymore yeah in the traditional sense they're not no i think brian eno said this <laughs> the flaws of technology become the beautiful things we remember calculators could only do so much but through those limitations we we discovered that you could spell boobs upside down you could spell boobless and as we've only just realized you could spell boobies yeah they, they, that was kind of our iPhones. They, those were our iPhones, really. That's the closest thing we had to iPhones. We typed in boobless, then we pretended to be on the phone with our friends telling them about what we typed. <laughs> that's that's what... We all just held calculators to our heads. <laughs> yeah. We pretended they were phones, and we were making deals until we were sent to the principal's office for disrupting the class. By our 
flat teachers. Wait, what? <laughs> I'm just riffing on boobless. I know. Remember when that was the most vicious thing you could say to a girl in your class? That she was flat. I, I yeah, actually. And then yeah, the guy equivalent was that he didn't have pubes yet. <laughs> I'm riffing on your age. Obviously, I came from a previous time. I'm an older guy. Yeah, yeah. Well, I remember there was a guy that got actually like, like he had to leave the school because everyone fa- like made fun of him for masturbating. Made fun of him. Made fun of him for masturbating in grade eight. They all, they all, they, they saw all... him, or how did they know? That's the thing. It was just a wait. Thing. How did? How was no one else masturbating in grade well, eight? Everyone was. I was all the time. Everybody was. But it was Andy was the guy who got kicked out of school. Yeah, it was me. It was me. No, he wasn't even masturbating at school. It was at his home in his like room. And I apparently someone was. This was the story. Someone was like delivering flyers, and they saw him. Not that that matters. And also, you wonder why that's a. What? Why? Why? What about that guy? That's weird. Anyway, it doesn't yeah, matter. The flyer yeah. guy. Yeah, the, the flyer peeping, guy. The peeping flyer man. <laughs> the peeping flyer man should have been also been you know implicated. But yeah, it got really bad. It was just like a. It was just bullying to a, to the max. Wow. Yeah, it was really bad. I have never masturbated. You've never masturbated. No, never. I did have two of my ribs removed, Marilyn Manson style, so I could fillet myself. That's masturbating. No, it's not. Yeah. No. So, that is definitely masturbating. No. Masturbating is with a hand. It's only with a hand? When you blow yourself with lips and mouth, that's, that's my friends, what it's all about. What's it called? When you blow yourself with lips and mouth, that, my friends, what it's all about. <laughs> when you touch yourself with just your hand, you're out of the school, you're out of the band. <laughs> that's, yeah, well, I know you all know the, that. That's the rules I grew up with in the, 50, in the 60s Canada. Diefenbaker years. Oh, was it Diefenbaker? Sure, I don't know. I don't know. <laughs> you didn't really pay attention to politics, did you, Dad? I was too busy, A, convincing Sucking my doctor to remove yeah. my ribs for what I had to argue were not purely cosmetic reasons so that I could take advantage of Canada's wonderful health care system. You don't get covered if it's cosmetic. That's true. So you've got to convince them it's for health reasons. So I had to convince them that if I didn't blow myself... <laughs> I was going to have a nervous breakdown. <laughs> and I convinced him. It was a men- early mental health case. You could see uh, it's the people v. Roly Bush in the uh, Canadian court history documents. And you won it. I won it. That's incredible. Yeah. I mean, what argument would you have for that to be a health reason? I convinced everyone in the courtroom that they all deep down wanted to blow themselves. And then I, I showed them that I was not a, I am not an animal. I am not a monster. I am like all of you. And everyone agreed. Yeah. And then if you remember the, the Canadian rib removal craze of 1970, that was, I started that. Wow. Yeah. That's why there's an entire generation of Canadians who have two less ribs. And Marilyn Manson gets all the credit. Wait, even the women too? Did the women do that as well? Yeah. 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 Oh. I think the women were like, how much does a rib weigh? Well, I'm going to cut that pa- those oh pounds. Oh, my God. <laughs> this, this Don't. Is, Don't. <laughs> women want to weigh less and men want to blow themselves, Andy. It's the okay. hard truth. I'm sorry your SJW brain can't wrap itself around that. I'm learning a lot. Thanks, Dad. Speaking of wonderful women, and you know what? Hard, impossible segue from this uh, self fellatio topic which i didn't intend to get so dirty so fast yeah i know i'm sorry i brought up the masturbating thing i just really felt bad about it and i want to talk about it so your yeah. masturbating bullied boy walked so that i could run <laughs> you know what we've we've done a few episodes now we're trying to help my beautiful boy andy out and we barely talked at all about his relationship status <laughs> he's a more or less single guy to my knowledge, but maybe he's not. He doesn't share these kinds of things with me, and it's a big grievance of mine. So today, we're going to try and coax some information out of him and also get him some help uh, through the wonderful, uh, insightful eye and brain and mouth of relationship expert Donna Lovelong. Thank you so much for having me. Oh, thank you so much for being here, Donna. Sure. My son, unmarried. Unmarried. I'm not surprised. 
Oh, why do you say that? Coming out knives uh, first. Uh, it's not knives, you know. It's just an observation. Um, you know, I you I had heard about a masturbation, about a video games. These are things of a single person. These are things of someone who doesn't have a lot of friends. These are things of someone who's very alone, very depressed, very down on themselves, maybe close to death, perhaps. Jeez, someone who's just hell? not really here, you know. I mean, maybe he doesn't even want to be. In oh. fairness, the masturbation was about someone else. That story. Oh, of course, yes. yeah. But yeah, but he had said just, himself that he was masturbating but a lot. People masturbate. We all agree that people masturbate. Everyone was masturbating. Are you saying that masturbating as a eighth grader? No, I know I came out strong against this, but you're saying that's abnormal, Donna? No, I think it's completely normal, but he came from a household where his father had removed both of his ribs so he could blow himself. So uh, I guess that's I imagine there now, was an, so yeah, okay, an yeah, unhealthy uh, version of, of love and masturbation in the home. Uh, it, fair because enough. Yeah, to be honest, you... I did not know that Dad did that oh, at you never all. Walked he kept it in very on him? I never walked in on my father sucking his own dick, so... Uh, Rolly, did you ever walk in on Andy masturbating or catch him in the act? Ew, no. If I had ever walked in on him, I would have... I would have I would have grabbed him by the collar, yeah. forced him to zip up his pants, dragged him down to the nearest doctor, mm. consulted over non-cosmetic river oh, surgery, come on. and provided him with a superior alternative mm. that to me doesn't technically qualify as masturbation but feels so good. This is you would have you would have gotten me at like in grade eight, 13, you would have gotten both my ribs removed so I could suck my own dick. 13 would have been too late in my books. Oh my god. <laughs> That's it is true. Yeah, before the bones chest. have actually really fused together as you're young, it's best to do that surgery before everything's real solid. That's right. After 13, your ribs fuse together mm-hmm. into a solid block like Are an exoskeleton. Are really talking about prepubescent boys getting their ribs removed? No, we're talking about you and me as prepubescent yeah, boys getting their ribs removed. Yeah, these are personal stories. Okay, all right. Yeah. I'm sorry. It's okay. not weird if it's about you or your son. Oh, okay. great. Um, so, Andy, how long have you been single for? I'm actually not single. Well, Andy, let me be the first to apologize, which is, of course, also the title of my book. What's Best your book title? <laughs> let me be the first to apologize. Good. <laughs> Was that in reaction to a previous book you'd written or a scandal that preceded this one? Yeah. It was, of course, uh, my whole life, you know, is, is I, I'm just an open book, really. And so I, I look at my books like my own body that I'm giving to everyone. So let me be the first to apologize was um, after many years of being actually unable to apologize. I never learned how to apologize when I was younger. I never okay. learned what forgiveness was. And I went for about 40 years without ever apologizing or really uh, doing that. So ne- then I had to, you know, I went through... Uh, a relationship uh, with uh, actually it was a friend of mine, and then uh-huh. we ended up getting married. And uh, I did a lot of things wrong, all of the things wrong actually. And so I really hurt that person, and I I had to apologize for everything. And so the first time you ever did that was in a in a book. In a book, yes. So you didn't actually apologize to him. It was just no. Okay, it was just in the book. That I was going to write it in the foreword. Um, but I left it out. So, oh, oh so, so, you didn't. so you didn't even re- apologize to him in the book. No, you just apologized. You. It's a book the about. Uh, is, of yes, exactly. It's a bra- embracing the idea of apologizing and let me be the first to apologize, which is essentially about taking responsibility for everyone else around you first. Donna, can I propose something that sure. might hurt you a little? Oh, okay. I still don't think you've actually apologized ever. <laughs> You oh. wrote a book about the value of apologizing. The value of it, yes, so important. Without ever doing it. Exactly. What do you mean? How well, do you how do you the, justify that? Because the concept of apologizing is taking responsibility. So if you just take responsibility, but then you, you don't have didn't... to apologize. <laughs> what do you mean? So you just took responsibility in another way. Well, here's the thing. When you say, let me be the first to apologize... Uh-huh. You don't actually have to say, I'm sorry. (laughs) (laughs) But yeah, I still have to say that to someone. Um, Yes. Well, I, I, I recommend more saying it to yourself. It's more about the apology comes from yourself first. Comes so, from yourself and for yourself. To yourself. Yes. So, are you trying to say you say, "Let me be the first to apologize," and you're assuming the other person will say, "Don't worry about it." So of then, course. technically, every time they do, apologize. every time that I've ever heard anyone say, "Let me be the first to, to apologize," or any time I've ever said it to someone, they always stop me. They say, "No, <laughs> let me be the first to apologize 
So it's a tactic it's a to tactic get them to apologize. To get other people to apologize. I'm starting to... Even when it's your fault. Put together a character study of you, mm. and it's not flattering. Okay. I'm just going to say that outright. Right. I'm going to say, and I don't know what qualifies as sociopathic, mm. right. but I've got to say you're on that spectrum. Okay. Not simply because of what you said so mm. far, but because of your penetrating stare. Right. I know viewers or <laughs> listeners at home can't glean this, but you uh, haven't blinked yet. No. I don't really. And that probably comes from a lifelong of never making a mistake once. So You've you just said you, you made a mistake. Mistakes. Well, the mistake is admitting to the mistake because really oh, writing that book was the mistake. Well, no, the book actually has been a bestseller, as you know. It's probably how you even found me. Uh it's been I a found wonderful one. Promoted wonder- Facebook ad. Mm. Oh really? Yes. Oh yes. It I said it. I will guest on a podcast. Mm-hmm. <laughs> And I needed someone in a pinch. Oh. I'm, I'm not trying to hurt you, Donna, but I feel like I've got to I gotta assert to listeners that you and I are not on the same side anymore. It's just, if you take the responsibility for everything and say, let me be the first to apologize, and then you're the one that takes responsibility for everything, then everyone feels sorry for you because obviously not everything can possibly be one person's fault, and then the blame actually gets shifted mm. uh, away from you. Uh. You're learning. You're you're teaching me a lot about how to like. I guess argue with, hmm. uh, say, my my signif- significant other. That's uh, oh, that's... don't yeah, don't. Take so, that Andy, lesson. tell me a bit yeah, about your relationship. <laughs> yeah, how long have you been together? Well, we've been together for almost a year now. <gasps> yeah, we've been almost a year, and uh, I'm not exactly sure uh, what to do or if I should do something for. I mean, I don't know. Modern relationships. We were never like... Modern oh. relationships. Go what? on, sorry. No, we're Just we're... clocking that. Go on. We were never like, okay, we are officially going out now. Like, okay, so just... when will you be officially going out? Well, I mean, out? I guess we're, we're officially going out, okay. but I'm just saying going out. We're, well, when we're... did you know in your, in your mind, when were you official? Oh. Yeah, when? When? When did you know that this is my Nine girlfriend? <laughs> yeah, 9-11. No that matter long what time relationship ago. he's in, Andy celebrates that it's official on 9-11. Because <laughs> the feelings he feels are so overwhelmingly passionate that he needs someone to share them with. I always make sure I'm with someone on 9-11. Yeah, like, you got to like be with Like Christmas. This but 9-11, 9/11 is, is my Christmas. Find Christmas. someone you love. Yeah, yeah. Um, yeah, I mean, we, we, we actually met on an on a internet dating program. <laughs> What the hell? You mean a dating app? Yeah. Dating Why app. did you say it that way? Tinder. We met on Tinder. You're an Oh, alien. wow. That's lovely to hear that you met on a dating app. I yeah, just want to we... go through Andy's thought process there. If I say internet dating program, they won't figure out I mean Tinder. Well, it could have been something not as, you know. The it, way you said it, could it have was been like, so incriminating. What's that other thing? Like the singles.com or something. What's that? What the other, uh, you know, the... Match.com. That's what it's called. Match.com is not, isn't as bad as Tinder, right? I mean, Tinder's not... You meet some good people on Tinder. Oh, Basically, yeah. Basically, you meet someone on Tinder... Presidential you, candidates. No, come on. Future humanitarians. Tinder's not that bad. You just end up meeting someone, and then you just both complain about how bad Tinder is. And I met a woman on Kinder. What's oh, Kinder? What's it's Kinder? a Kinder surprise egg sponsored version of Tinder. Really? And it's pretty much Tinder. You hook up to pork or whatever, but after you do that, you have to give each other just a small, useless toy. Okay, for the record, we did not meet up to pork. That was no, there was no conversation about that at the time. We just we just chatted. We had a really interesting nice... because Tinder is actually a, pretty much a hookup app. No, it is not just a hookup app. Have I'm you pro- had sex? We've had sex, yes. Okay, how many times? Wow, okay, I don't that's know. I'm quick. not writing it down. That's pretty quick. What's your sex life like? Let's skip to that. Oh, it's fine. It's a good sex life. <laughs> yeah. We're, yeah, that's our sex life is fine. Fine. <laughs> I, I, yeah, I, don't want I guarantee you, it doesn't live up to what I think is fine. Okay, well, and what would your what did you teach Andy was a fine sexual? I'll tell you exactly what relationship. I Woman in bed, lying there waiting for you. You in an adjacent room. <laughs> Two ribs short of a full set, <laughs> going at yourself, her encouraging you through the wall, loudly, great words, you finishing off, joining her in bed, watching some nice CSI New York, starring Gary Sinise. I'm so glad I didn't know that you had your ribs removed and I didn't learn anything about women from you. I'm really glad. I've only got two ribs left. As, what? I, as I got older, my back got worse. It got harder and harder to reach. <laughs> so I had to remove more and more ribs. I definitely flop over a lot. 
That's why it looks like I'm wearing a coat hanger in my in the part of my shirt. It's because I've got like a prop that's like essentially a broom mm. handle attached to a steel supported beam. Oh, is that what that is? It's, you do have a quite a floppy look to you. Yeah, I'm being held up. Sort of like a scarecrow. <laughs> but Andy, I feel like we've gotten away from your relationship. And oh, I know. Let so me just good. say that it seemed like you really squirmed when I brought up sex. Well, it's not that I squirmed when I brought up sex. It's not the way that, that I squirm, gonna... which is because of my ribless state. Oh. <laughs> She's just going to be probably listening to this, so I don't really need to get too deep into it. It's it's very good. My, my I I more have a question about you know what I should do or how I should deal with uh, like the anniversary because I don't exactly know when our anniversary yeah, is. How do you well, you don't that? know when it is. I don't know exactly when it would be. I mean, would it be the first date? Yes. Really? Yes. The first date? Well, I didn't know we were dating. I mean, it was like at that point. But we were, were you probably... dating other people well, while... Well, I was going on other dates when I first met her. I mean, I was meeting other people, so... So then, no, it's not the date of your first date. It would be the date that you decided you were exclusive. Uh-huh. 9-11. When did you decide you were exclusive? I mean, and how? Was there a conversation? Well, it was sort of a conversation. It was, yeah. I mean, like... I, see, I just, it did all you just have was... a... You all got together and deleted the app... Oh, that's dude. nice. A ceremonial I... deleting of the Tinder. <laughs> <laughs> that would have been good. No, I just kind of deleted it. What day um, did you do that? Yeah, what day I did you delete I don't know. I don't write it down on my calendar. I already anything. know. I'm just playing coy. 9 11, Dad. 9 11 <laughs> is when I deleted it. <sighs> well, Andy. A lot of people. Do. I don't know. What do you two like to do together? Uh, we watch. Oh, we're just very... I mean, we watch movies. What, come on, we got to do something interesting. So you like to watch movies together. We like watch movies together. Um, she's change. Jewish, so maybe okay. there's we could do something kind of like... Oh, how do Jewish people celebrate their first... Loose yes, first you're Jewish. Uh, are you circumcised? That would be a nice gift to her on your, on your year anniversary. <laughs> what, I could get circumcised again? Because I am circumcised. Oh, I don't you know are. if that's going to okay. really... Well, that's how Jews do their anniversary. They, they circumcise them. They yes. circumcise their Gentile partners. Yes. Oh, that's interesting. I went to a Jewish wedding just recently. And it was oh, well, not technically a Jewish wedding, but there were Jewish elements to it. Okay. They crushed, they the, crushed glass. the glass. Yeah. And glass. They, and we ice. got... <laughs> Wind. The Jewish elements. <laughs> no, we got... And they, they got married under a... a, a, I'm a fuck chuppa. This. Yes, a chuppa. A I, but I, I, every time I say a it, chuppa, it's they a say that canopy. it's wrong. I say chuppa. And they go, no, no, it's a chuppa. And I go, it, a chuppa. And they go, no, a chuppa. So... Is it? Am I saying it right? I think so. Okay, so. on first. I hope no, hoopa's on first. Hoopa's on. I, that's what on I said. first. That's I helped what I make. Said. I helped make a hoopa. Hoopa. Yeah. Hoopa. Yeah. It was funny. It's great. Hoopa. Has Hupa there been anything that your girlfriend has been saying, sort of, that she really wants to do, or you've been that she's been saying she's been wanting? Something sort of underlying. She's been saying, "I want to go on a vacation." She or, does want to go on a vacation, so it would be nice. Go? Um, we just want to go somewhere. I think yeah. we just want to get out of the city for a bit. So. Well, why don't you surprise Guelph. her for your in, for your anniversary mm-hmm. with a vacation? A surprise her with a vac- Yeah, I could do that. I really should do that. That's probably a good idea. That's nice. You know, yeah. you can just go. But what if a... what if it's somewhere she doesn't want to go? Like, I don't want to just like give her tickets somewhere. Well, why don't you make tickets? You know, you you crayons, oh a fake tickets a like fake wherever ticket you want to go. Says, Let's go on a vacation. That seems. Eh. You what? can go on inexpensive, you know, all inclusive resorts if mm-hmm. that's your thing, or take a yeah, and sh- take a trip over to Seattle, Washington. I'm gonna tell you what how to do this. You get a card that says vacation on it, mm-hmm. then you hand her a wad of cold hard cash mm-hmm. and send her on her way. Yeah. Oh great. <laughs> that's okay. how you do it. Okay, I'll try that. You and gotta then, go somewhere. Where it'll, would you? Because you don't even know what your anniversary when it is. So I, I we haven't talked about. Listen, that. I can I weigh in on this? Yes. yes. In all seriousness. Okay. Make it the first date because the first date's nice because sure. it'll always be a bit confusing in between. But first date, you'll always remember it. You'll always remember it, and it's nice. Was it and good? It's almost nice to celebrate the first spark. Was it a good first, first date? Was, I mean, it was nice. We had a, we had beers and we talked, and then oh, you had some local IPAs. Kissed me, and then that was that. that she was, kissed you. She kissed me. Reciprocate I as know. I taught you. Yeah, as I taught you. Don't Honestly, give it up. I was a little. I was like, I okay, all right. So she, she, yeah, she, she came. She for had it. to like uh, t- uh, test me out. Apparently, test out your kissing. Yeah, that's what that was. What she hmm. just said to me. Yeah, take this one for a spin. Oh yeah, yeah. 
can't see how you feel behind the wheel. Yeah. So that's like, and that was it. But I mean, I, again, and I was trying to play it cool. I didn't. I wasn't sure if she was into me or not. So where did you have these beers? Where'd you go? The Cloak and Dagger. Oh, uh, the Cloak and Dagger. Oh. College Eight, Street on College Street. Yeah. One of oh, Toronto's like finest a, Irish bars. Like a cool dive oh. bar. But like not I too. don't know Toronto so well because I'm in town. Oh, yeah. Where are you oh, from? Yeah, where are you Seattle, from? Washington. Oh, Seattle. Oh. We had another guest from Seattle. Oh. You may know him. Dr. Fraser Crane. Oh, of yeah. course. An- another another, another uh, advice giver. Yeah. yeah. Although he's the one who seems to need the advice because after all of those years behind the microphone, he still doesn't know what to do. With those tossed salads and scrambled eggs. Wow. Thank you for listening, everyone. Oh, wow. That was like an Everardo joke, man. Thank you for everyone for listening. <laughs> You're from Seattle. You're in Toronto. Cloak and Dagger. You got to check it out. We got a fine variety of okay. quote unquote Irish bars where essentially it's just dark and the bartender's allowed to be so mean to you. Oh. And that's, that's Ireland, baby. <laughs> That was pretty much it, yeah. What's your favorite IPA, Andy? Did you order a nice IPA? Was it Flying Donkey Punch? Or was it it Two Shoes on a Dead Caboose? I like Keith's. Oh, you like Keith's? A proud maritime boy. Yeah, it's an IPA. That's technically an IPA. Oh, yeah. Yeah, not if you ask the uh, people who make uh, Tiger Rider 69 (laughs) at Trinity... Bellwoodsbreweries.com. Uh, craft beer. Craft beer. That's what craft I'm talking beer, about. Craft beer. That's what they are. Yeah. I don't really drink beer. So. Out of the beer like, game, are you? Yeah. I'm not really a beer guy. And we had, we both didn't drink beer. I think we were and both And why nervous. is that, you think? Why well, I don't drink beer? Mm-hmm. I just don't really like, I get, I get pretty loopy when I drink beer. Oh. Maybe yeah. you are gluten intolerant. Uh, I don't believe that that's the thing. gluten? You don't think it's all the booze? Mm, yeah, no, I think it's never. the booze. Because the gluten that got me drunk. I'm just so fucked up on gluten. No, I just had some. Uh, yeah, I don't really drink beer. I usually just drink like whiskey. I think I'm allergic to poppies. That's why this heroin's got me all mm. fucked up. But why Andy, don't I just the ask only her what thing... she wants to do for our anniversary, I could just text her right well, now. Well, because oh, Andy, women plans. don't want to be asked what they want to do for an anniversary. They want like to that. be romanced. They want to be surprised. And sometimes. We want the men to take over and do something for us where we don't have to be a part of the decision. I mean, oh, okay. I think, I think both wings would be true, right? It's like, yeah, you can ask her and she'd appreciate that and you'd have a nice time. And then or, I'll just do whatever I want. Yeah, classic man style. And then yeah, get her I'll a, ask her what she wants and I'll do my thing. Buy her a pint glass and a bunch of darts for her anniversary <laughs> and then she'll be like, but I don't drink pints and play darts. <laughs> and then you can take your pint glass down to the bar where everyone brings their own pint glass and then you drink a nice pint of lager and you play darts with the boys. And that's how you ring in your anniversary. Well, here's a good way to find out how someone wants to spend their celebrations is you think back to how they gifted you and what did they do for your birthday. So when was your birthday, Andy? September. September. Happy Which birthday. Which day? Say the day. Say the day. September. 11. 11. 11. Not 11. 11. And so what did your girlfriend do on your birthday? I wasn't, unfortunately, I wasn't there. Okay. And we weren't together, but she did buy me two tickets to uh, the VR experience so I could play virtual reality. Ah, video games. Video games. So she really knows what I like. Maybe instead of going on vacation, you could just take her to the VR gallery and go all <laughs> With around With the, the world. tickets she bought me. But Take her she got to you VR. a group activity yes, yes, for you yes. to do together. Mm-hmm, yeah. so she likes the, the experience together. She, likes to she is her. a quality time love language Get her no- nosebleed seats to see Toronto's finest professional lacrosse, the Toronto Rock. Oh. <laughs> is that a real thing? And you see that Indian rubber ball zipping about the court. On the hard cement, see those sneakers pounding the pavement and then fine mesh of a lacrosse stick whipping about as the goalies try their best to keep out Canada's finest athletes preserving Canada's game, lacrosse. What do you want to do for your anniversary, Andy? I don't know. I just want to just like hang out. I'm so boring. Uh, You know what I'd like to, what would I like to do? I don't know. Just just watch a movie, maybe? Go see a movie. What's a fun way to watch a movie? You go watch a... Well, I always say you can watch it naked. What the hell? It's a fun way to watch a movie. Yeah, watch a movie naked. Another That's fun way to do it naked. is put a mirror 
on the other side of the room where the TV from the TV. So you actually watch the movie backwards. So the the TV the is is playing into the mirror. What? That's a fun way to watch TV. What are you talking about? Well, because if you have a favorite episode of a of a show, <laughs> like backwards. Felina, Breaking Bad finale, you're like, I watched this so many times. Felina. Well, turn yourself around and look inside the mirror. Now the episode's backwards. And now you're all so naked. So you are you watching get myself to... watching a movie? Mm-hmm. Oh, I don't want to see myself naked. No, oh, that's okay. Why? Too many ribs. Too many no, ribs. That's, he's going to get self conscious about having too many ribs. A fun way to watch TV if you love watching TV. Do you live together? No, no. Oh, no, no, no. 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 Hang on one second. No. We're focusing I on the animal. I live with Anna. my dad. I live with my dad. That's right. He lives with me. Okay. I mean, you could get a new TV that's very big. Yeah. And you can get another that's what I'll TV. Get. I'll get her a big TV for the end of Get her a big TV, but not one of the new ones. One of the ones that's got like a, one of those butts on it that like takes up 10 feet of space. A butt? You know, like a TV butt. Like, you know how the old TVs had the big old butt on them? No. The butt on the TV. The big old butt. Like a, a, a ass. The ass of the TV. What are you? Oh, oh, a butt. Oh, you mean the back of the television? Yeah, the big old the butt. The tube. Yeah, the tube. Where the tubes are the fucking butt. No one calls it a butt. Yeah, the TV butt. You no walk one in, says that. Walk into a future shop and ask for a new TV, and they'll say, "Oh, are you looking for a modern flat uh, surface only TV or one with a big old butt?" And you say, <laughs> "Obviously a flat one." They go, "Okay, bye. I can get you a nice deal on one with a butt." Huh. That's what a uh, one with a butt. That's what you want. Nice one, mm. where you have to walk right up and change the channels on the dial on the TV. You have to flip them. And you only get 11 channels, and, th- and 10 of them are... Uh, static. Yeah, static. But and the yeah. one channel you really get is uh, City TV. You know, the first TV broadcast was... We lost yeah, Everardo. Hitler. What? Uh, I'm still here. Oh, he's here. That's a Hitler speech. That's so what? disappointing. That was the first ever TV broadcast? Yeah, it was gross. That's awful. It's we should all burn our TVs. I mean, or that could just be a... Fucking thing I saw in Contact, the the movie. That's what, remember they were like... Uh, I've never seen Contact. Oh, sorry. I almost watched Contact once, but do you know what happened? I dropped it and I couldn't find it. No! I dropped God. it on the ground and I couldn't find my contact. I had a copy of the DVD Contact and I dropped it in the long grass and I couldn't find my contact. So I had to watch a different movie. Do you know what it was called? What? Glasses. <laughs> <laughs> Jesus Christ! <laughs> Have you guys heard that? Oh my god, have you guys seen the new Venom movie? Have you heard the new? Yes. Have you heard Eminem's theme song for Venom? No. <laughs> no. What you heard? Oh, I love the Venom song. It's what is event. it? There's I, nothing I can't good wait about to see Venom. Venom. It's it sounds probably the amazing. best Venom Eminem is... song that has ever been made. The it's... Venom. Okay, there's so much to say. Venom we don't sounds have so time. Good. Venom is the worst movie ever oh, made. Oh, stop it. Somehow it brings Tom Hardy down to dirt level. <laughs> Michelle Williams seems like she's drugged out on Ambien the entire time. <laughs> Tom Hardy seems punch drunk or just normal drunk. It's fucking weird. The story is it, shit. It sounds wonderful. It's a is piece it true of that trash. Adam has sex with Tom Hardy in it? No, he like it like kisses him when it's Michelle Williams Venom. It's like sexy girl Venom for a second. It's so boring. The only problem with actually it is that it's wait that does mean that he kisses Venom. Yeah, because Venom's Venom... definitely got a fucked up relationship with him. It doesn't matter. I mean, let's just say that for the first hour and 15, Venom's like, I can't wait to destroy the world. And then Venom sees like one view of San Francisco. And then it's like, actually, let's help the world because I'm (laughs) empathetic now. Really? (laughs) The turn is insane. But then you get to the fucking credits and it's a dream because it's Eminem singing the theme song to Venom. And the entire theme song is just him going, Venom, 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 Venom. You want to come to me? Don't touch Haley. (laughs) (laughs) Fuck you, Kim. Fuck you, Haley. I'm Venom, 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 Venom. (laughs) A surprising fact about that song is that Eminem only says Venom twice in the chorus. Yeah, that is. Surprising. It sounds like he says it four hundred times. Is he imitating like a like a Kawasaki motorcycle in his? In his <laughs> song? Like that's how he's rapping. You know how Eminem sometimes gets really proud of himself. It's like in this one, I was rapping like a little bee. Or something. <laughs> <laughs> it's like oh, this one, I was angry. I rapping like an angry rat, uh, monster truck. When this one, it's like the entire song. He's like run, 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 run. Well, but all if the you words think are about so it, fucking stupid. <laughs> venom, better Venom, better get 'em, get 'em. I'm a get 'em, I'm a get 'em. There's a lot oh, of ums and ems. 
use an Eminem. It's, it's surprising he didn't use his own name. <laughs> I'm Eminem. 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 Yeah. Eminem. 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 <laughs> now this looks like a mm. job for Venom. <laughs> so Eminem, 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 Venom. Now we do a hard, smooth segue into our easily our least favorite segment of the show. Everardo makes up some shit, and we immediately uh, poke holes in it. <laughs> and it's I've been very getting a lot of DMs that people love this part of the show, and this should be its own podcast. Oh uh, yeah, what, are the, what does DM stand for? Something more uh, negative than what we would assume? This is one of my patented trivia games, and I thought since I am in England, I would uh, make it UK trivia. Okay. Oh, okay. You know what I say to trivia about the UK? Okay. <laughs> oh, just hurry on. on. Go on now. Go, go. go on now. All right, so in England, mm-hmm. the most popular meal to eat on Sundays is, is it A, boiled cube meat? Oh, cube meat. B, minced salmon. Uh-huh. C, eggs tartare. Uh-huh. Or D, pickled boar. And it is one of those answers. That's so hard to know. All I'd those say boiled, the insane. boiled meat cubes. Meat cubes is your guess? Mm-hmm. That was one of the options. Sure. Okay. Yeah, I'll go with meat cubes. Meat cubes. Uh, I don't know. The one, I don't fucking know. I kept waiting for you to say, like, <laughs> ham or something obvious and simple. <laughs> what is it? Oh. I can't even remember, so I'll just say uh, C, whatever C was. The eggs tartare. Sure, eggs uh, tartare. The answer was boiled meat cube. No! Oh, nice. British oh, delicacy. Yeah. And what is that? I have to say, it's pretty good. They it don't call of, it a meat cube, though, do they? They call it, uh, like, cubed meat. Would it be like a pancetta, like a cubed... Yeah, actually, kind of, yeah, like a, like a bite, like an like a appetizer-sized bite of a, a gray meat. Wow. Yeah. It looks bad, and it's not... Great. What I like uh, about the English is how they really fight back against the stereotypes you have about them. You know what I mean? They really do. They really don't dive into those at all. All What's right. The second question so there, I guess B? Laura got some points there, uh-huh. or someone else. Uh, both Andy and I have points. Yeah, we have one. We point. are on the board. Two, Two points, points for them. Zero for Dad. Uh, zero. Zero for me. Okay. In England, football means soccer, but soccer means a rugby. Oh. B, foosball. Uh, C, filling a tube sock with clementines and beating someone. Oh. Or D, soccer is not a word. In Very UK. fun, Ev. C was a lot of fun. <laughs> a lot of fun there, Ev. <laughs> I'm going to say B. My guess would be B as well. Oh, God. A soccer table. Uh, either B or D. Um, let's go for friggin' B. <laughs> Join in the crowd. Well, uh, it is D. No! Soccer is not a word. Not a they word. They know it, though. They know. What soccer means in England is just what Americans call football. Uh, that was not on the website that I read. Okay. So. <laughs> yeah. The English are just, they've never heard the word before. They've never heard that word piping out of the, 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 the culture that dominates media. <laughs> they refuse to acknowledge it. <laughs> All right. Now, why did Americans call their football football if football was football in the UK? It's a good question, Ev. Why don't you what give us that What came first? Um, that's just because uh, they wanted to be defiant. Again, it was invented at the time of the Civil War. That's not... Is that true? Are you being honest? Uh, yeah. Really? It was an act of defiance to take the word football and reappropriate it to something else? I mean, if I had to guess, yeah. Oh, you're guessing. <laughs> if I had to guess. I mean, I don't know. I'm not English. I'll tell you, the only thing I know about American football is that passing used to not be allowed. Really? That was a... That seems like that's that was, the whole game now. I know. At one point, that was a modern invention. In which one? Football or football? <laughs> All right, let's do it. You be Abbott, I'll be fucking Costello. Let's rock and roll. You got four minutes to kill. We'll get to the bottom of this. <laughs> Football's on first. All right, this is the last uh, uh, question, and then this game can be over. Uh, so UK's number one reality TV show Big Brother. Is, is it, well, that is A, Big Brother, uh, 
B, Great British Bake Off. Oh. C, Mind the Gap. The fuck? Which I, I don't even know what that is. Just a bunch of people or exiting D. a subway correctly or incorrectly. <laughs> a tube, I'm sorry, a tube. Or uh, D, CCT footage of uh, Banksy's uh, spray painting a dog. Very nice. That man. is. I, I missed the question because I was reading about soccer. What was the question again? What did you learn about soccer? What, what, what's the UK's number one reality show? Is it Big Brother? Is it the Great British Bake Off? Is it something called Mind the Gap? Or is it a long joke about Banksy that Ev just forced us to endure? <laughs> uh, no, it's, 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 it's the real. Great British it's Bake Off. Real. I'm going to say Mind the Gap just for fun. I'm saying Big Brother, baby. Uh, it is Big Brother. Oh, oh he knew it. Oh, yeah. Wait, wait, wait. We got a tie. We got a three-way tie with one point apiece. We got to have a tiebreaker. Ev, give us a tiebreaker question. Tiebreaker oh, question, UK <laughs> trivia. Ev, tiebreaker question, UK trivia. Okay, who can guess uh, the name of the Queen's Corgis? How, what? How, the name? How many are there? All of them? How many? <laughs> you can just name one of them. Okay, How many are there um, to choose from? Albert. Banksy. Albert. Banksy, we got Albert. Albert's you a great guess. You can choose from any name. I'm going to okay. say, uh, I'm going to say, um. I'm going to guess Harriet. Uh, Albert's such a good one. God Doesn't she have it. like 12 of them? Um, Albert's I not one have, of the names you, of her fucking dogs. Oh, she has a lot. For yeah. sure it is. Albert? What the hell's the name of, Victor, Vicky, Victoria, Victoria. Uh, probably like Floofy or some shit. Victoria. Okay, Albert, Victoria, and what's yours? Stumpy. Stumpy. Stumpy, yeah. yeah. Queen Elizabeth II and her corgi, Stumpy. Well, this just makes me upset because I have no corgis. I had a corgi growing up. I had two. You had two? What were their names? First one was Sally. Second one was Molly. Oh. I named the second one after my grade one crush. Molly? You named a dog after a crush? Yeah. Then I fucked the dog. And you fucked <laughs> Jesus Christ. <laughs> What hmm. is happening with Molly, this podcast? that's interesting. I don't know. Do you want to know the one, a real name of her corgi? Yeah, yeah I want to know Vagina. <laughs> yeah, it's vagina. This is not a joke. Uh, this is on Google. Her, one of her corgis is named Spick. No. What? And, another one, and another one is called Span. Uh, okay, that, okay. Well, you really you need have... to make sure they're together yeah. all the time. Yeah. <laughs> And then Span one of them dies, is called kill Spick. <laughs> yeah, that's because yeah. otherwise. <laughs> that's good. What else are they called, Ev? What was she thinking? Uh, one of them's called Emma. Oh, no, uh, Emma would have been good. Now they can, it's funny because that's a great name, and there's lots of royal babies coming in, so they can't name their babies Emma. How horrible! Yeah, now they have to call oh. them modern names like Digibot and <laughs> Dot Com and Braden. She has a uh, a Dachshund corgi named Vulcan. Vulcan? Vulcan? Vulcan, like Vulcan. Star Trek. Like Star Trek. One of them is called Cider, What's and the other one is called Trump's Candy. Candy. What's the last one? Candy Corn? Candy. Candy. These are not names that I would assume the queen would pick. Vulcan? Candy? Yeah. I, I have a feeling she didn't is. name them. Candy's the corgi that strips. <laughs> <laughs> That's the corgi that can remove its fur and then put it back on at the end of the night. Vulcan. So she's a Trekkie. Oh, man, I love Worf so much. Remember Worf? Oh, every, I actually had a pug and we almost named him Worf. Let me do my, let me do my Worf impression, okay? Okay. Say, say, okay, so here's Captain Picard. Say, like, the most, the most mundane thing you could say to me. Okay, um, it's a great day outside. No, it's too great, and that's a problem. <laughs> we have to slay the day until the rains <laughs> come. That's not Worf. That's Worf overreacts to friggin' everything. Okay, okay, that's first season Star Trek Worf. Give me something else that Picard would say. Say something, like, nice. Something what? nice? Just yeah. something nice? Like, something nice. Um, you got a great shirt. This shirt is too great. It fits too well. I'm furious. I have to tear it. So we have to destroy shirts. Guide our ship to the creator of shirts so that we may slay him. Down with shirts. 
It's true. In the first season, he did point his phaser at uh, the screen at one point when an alien came on. That was, and Picard was like, "What? You going to shoot the screen?" Yeah, and he the said that. Yeah. Oh Jesus! Oh man! You humiliated me! Why did you do that? That was fun. But yeah, <laughs> who won ever? I know. Um, I think Donna won. No, it was a three-way tie for one. You can't just choose your fave. <laughs> Uh, to be honest, I, uh, I did forget to keep score after that first question, so let's just chalk this up. We all kind of won. I think it wasn't me. I only got one right. Yeah, we all won because we learned a bit more about our brothers to the east, the UK fellowship. Where the... I think this is going to be a popular game, one of my best, I'd say. Yeah, let's just keep doing UK trivia long after you've returned to Canadian <laughs> soil. Well, Andy, good luck with your uh, upcoming anniversary, uh, and bye. Bye Thanks. now. Bye. See and ya. so ends the reign of terror of Everardo Ramirez, podcast uh, intern. And podcast. I am still here. What the hell? <laughs> He's still around. <laughs> it's the last gasp of the horror movie villain. <laughs> All right, now I am hanging up and will not hear... Uh, you disparaging me anymore. Kill so him, I, stab I, him. <laughs> I rewatched Scream last night. Terrific movie. Anyway. Oh, big and span. Um, so we've learned a lot today. Andy's learned a bit, but then decided to discard that mm. information about how to deal with his anniversary. What did I learn? I learned that, like, really, it's just, I, it's all about the person you're with and how you connect, and she's the kind of person. That's what you already thought. What you That's learned is that women like we to be surprised about. with a fun, important plan, and you have decided that that's not. She is a practical person. She enjoys planning. She enjoys to. That's what. Like, Does she Vulcan enjoy herself. planning? All right, I am going to surprise her. She's going to think it's going to be a planned thing, but I'm going to do something very spontaneous. What? No, we're saying you have to plan it. What? Also, when you say an upcoming anniversary, but you don't know when it is, when are you celebrating I don't. It? I mean, it's, it really is coming up so soon. In fact, probably like a couple weeks. So I really, but I feel like if I do something spontaneous, like you said, it'll be fine. I don't have to plan it. I just to do it. Just go do That's something. That's not what she said. That's we're saying said. to plan something awesome. Plan it. <laughs> what? Plan something awesome! You say, but she, hi, I don't dear, want her here, to plan. here's two to part of plan. Here's plan. Two plan. fake tickets. Now let's together get online and book a vacation. Oh, yeah, book a nice vacay. I mean, that requires no planning, so I like that. Because then she would, I don't have to, I just have to write right. up two yes, like, yes. little things. Yeah. And that's take, very take sweet and like exciting. And then it's like, Ottawa oh, we're going to take a vacation. Somewhere else that's, why don't I just have you ever been on a vacation with her? Yeah, yeah. Where'd you go? Uh, well, Halifax. We haven't really gone. That's not a vacation. That's not a vacation. No. Okay, all right. Halifax is work. If okay. your if your family is around, which I know you are from Halifax, yes, that's not a vacation. That's not a vacation. Okay, that is work for her, I suppose. Yeah. yeah. So uh, an emotional labor. Okay, yes. so emotional labor. So okay, emotional to Europe. Labor. We'll go to Europe. What if I just bought tickets and told, yeah. told her we're going to Europe? Tomorrow? If you knew her schedule, then do it. All right. Yeah. So Buy okay. two tickets to Bosnia Herzegovina. And hmm. see the. Uh, I want to go to. We want to go to Israel, so I think we might go there. Israel. Oh, what yeah. a wonderful place to visit! Yeah, yeah. I want to go. Wow. There. Anyway, all right. Okay. See the Wailing Wall. Cool. See the wall. Sure. I guess there's cool the stuff to see there. Yeah. There's lots of stuff to see there. Lots of stuff. It's ah! great. We can talk about I've it. done seminars yes. there. I can hook you up with some people. Oh, that great. I yeah. know there. Well, thank you so much, Donna. Love good. Love long. Thank uh, you so much for having me, Rolly, Andy. I wish you all the best. Thank you so much. On behalf of Andy, on behalf of sweet Donna Lovelong and her wonderful advice, and on behalf of uh, the shit heel English version of Everardo Ramirez, I'm really much saying thank you for listening to my gorgeous song.